So, uh, very good morning to all of you and uh, warm welcome to IIT. Uh, as you know, we are going to talk about uh, this distillation, advances in distillation. We are going to touch upon many uh, aspects of uh, distillation and distillation systems. Uh, uh, mainly, of course, the first lecture will be on introduction of distillation. Then we have um, something on vapor liquid equilibrium. Uh, which is very important aspect of uh, any distillation design or simulation or you really want to practice it in reality. Okay. The first lecture which is on introduction uh, to distillation. Uh, of course, uh, this lecture uh, most of the things you know, okay, but uh, uh, I thought okay, let us start with this lecture so it forms a good platform for further discussions um, during our entire program. Okay. Uh, distillation, uh, of course, the king of all operations, highly technologically matured. Okay, like uh, if you see all other operations, separations rather, uh, we have many separation processes uh, for liquid mixtures, like say extraction. You can go for stripping, absorption, then you can have adsorption, right? So many multi-stage processes out of which distillation is the most popular. Every chemical engineer thinks of distillation first, okay, uh, while separating a mixture. Okay, why? Because it's highly matured. That means there is not much risk component in it. Okay, like when, when, whenever I want to implement distillation, it is very, very well known. Okay. Uh, the most important thing is of course, the vapor liquid equilibrium. Okay. And uh, most of the time the systems, okay, they are quite similar, the mixtures or components involved are quite similar. Uh, then of course, I can go ahead with ideal system assumption and uh, design and distillation column which most of the time works. So, in this particular lecture, uh, we are going to uh, just take a review of uh, what we have learned of course, most of the times in our undergraduate curriculum like uh, the basics of distillation. Then we have uh, design calculations, McArthur method, most popular method like every chemical engineer knows about it. Uh, just quickly revise this and then we will take a step forward and uh, talk about uh, non-ideal systems, okay, uh, which is something that uh, uh, normally bothers uh, any engineer who is designing a distillation system uh, because most of the designs today are based on gut feelings experiences, okay. but there is no systematic methodology available to design a distillation column which is associated with say formation of azeotropes or I want to deal with some tangent pinches in uh, uh, system because of the non-ideality. Right. So, uh, let us talk about uh, the non-ideal systems. Then we have energy integration. Is there a possibility to do energy integration in distillation systems? When I am talking about distillation, I am not talking about a binary mixture. I am not talking about mixtures where I have A and B present. I want to separate just A from B. I am talking about a multi-component, very general mixture. Okay, might be non-ideal. Right. In that case, you have a sequence. Right. You have many columns. Right. And uh, can I integrate? Okay, the energy requirements in all these columns. So, it is quite possible there are many opportunities okay, to do energy integration in distillation systems. And in this particular lecture, I will just tell you about some examples and of course, Professor Malik will cover that in great details probably to, towards the end of this program. Uh, as I said before, azeotropic and extractive distillations where uh, these are very special techniques where the thermodynamics does not normally allow you to rather uh, separate the mixture. Uh, thermodynamics is not friendly, it is not cooperative. So, you do something, okay, you add external component and try and separate the mixture somehow. Okay. So, there are very special or enhanced distillation techniques uh, uh, as your topic and extractive and we are going to spend uh, 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 much more time on these techniques compared to ideal distillation. And lastly, of course, reactive distillation which is very uh, popular these days. It is not just enhanced distillation like azeotropic and extractive, but it is a process I would say like it is a multifunctional reactor. It has a capability to combine reaction and distillation in single unit to give the enhancement in overall performance. So, reactive distillation, it is a very special technique and it is a field on its own and we have dedicated almost one day for reactive distillation and we have been doing research in reactive distillation in IIT Bombay for about last 6-7 years and we have many experimental facilities available. We have uh, done some process development work on um, some related systems. Okay. Uh, so, this is about the content of this particular uh, talk. Uh, so, in the introduction as, as you know you have a mixture of A plus B, right? you have mixture of A plus B and uh, A is the most volatile or A is more volatile than B 
and uh, I want to separate it. Okay, distillation exploits the difference in volatility. Uh, you see the question back it can we say the boiling points is the volatility same as boiling point right. The answer is no why because sometimes it is quite possible that two components with two different boiling points okay forming azeotrope making one of them more volatile or less volatile right. So, formation of azeotrope in non ideal systems okay you cannot really say that the volatility okay is related to boiling point okay. I cannot say the component one is more volatile means okay its boiling point is less yeah fine in pure form yes. But in the mixture it may behave differently because of non ideal interactions quite possible right. So, that is why you should be very careful dealing with non ideal systems that is why I have made this question here in ideal systems fine component with less boiling point is more volatile okay. Uh, so, we have mixture I am boiling it okay taking vapors out mixture will be enriched in A if A is more volatile okay typically for ideal systems is always true. When do I use distillation for such system when it is feasible okay. Now, this feasible word is very important it is going to come every now and then in uh, subsequent lectures the feasibility is a very important uh, uh, aspect of distillation. We do not bother about feasibility when we deal with ideal systems okay because I know that there is no formation of azeotrope okay somehow if I play with reflux ratio if I play with number of stages I am going to get separation right separate feasibility is not an issue of course cost is another issue that will be looked upon later but then feasibility as far as feasibility is concerned whether a given mixture can be separated in pure components okay that is nothing but feasibility and for ideal systems that is not a question. For non ideal systems we have to spend lot of time knowing whether the operation is feasible or not whether distillation is feasible or not. As you know if there is a formation of azeotrope okay I there is a boundary in composition space I cannot move from one region to another region right. So, feasibility is an issue and looking at distillation its popularity its maturity okay even if it is an expensive technique sometimes compared to other separation processes people go for it just because there is less risk, risk associated with it. Many people know how to operate a distillation column many people know how to design a distillation column right. That is why I have said whenever it is feasible go for it okay but of course. Uh, it is a very uh, ambitious uh, statement uh, sometimes some other operations some other separations might be uh, economically better compared to distillation right. Now, you have one operation where you are boiling mixture I am just taking the vapors out condense them okay and then again evaporating or boiling I do it in a cascade form okay. Right. The many stages now what is happening A is more volatile than B right when n tends to infinity you may get pure A right because as you go on looking at the composition of these streams right you are going to see that the stream is enhanced or enriched in A because A is more volatile it is very uh, simple straightforward. Uh, as I go on increasing the stages right I will get more and more A in the vapor stream right and if I if I have n equal to infinity right n equal to infinity I may get pure A again that word may is very important there because if you have formation of azeotrope okay you are not going to get pure A if there is a minimum boiling azeotrope you will get minimum boiling azeotrope and not pure A. It is very simple very straightforward but uh, I am putting emphasis on this because later on we will be using this every now and then when we learn about non ideal systems azeotropic distillation extractive distillation. Go reverse I am interested in pure B right now I have this mixture I just evaporate I just boil take the vapors out instead of dealing with vapor now I deal with liquid okay. Now, liquid is enriched in B right liquid is enriched in B and then I do the same thing again and again. So, that the final stream that comes out is enriched in B and again if I have n equal to infinity I may get pure B I may get pure B depending on whether there is a formation of azeotrope or not. If there is a maximum boiling azeotrope then I would not get pure B right 
I'll get a maximum boiling isotrope even if I have number of stages equal to infinity. Okay. So, thermodynamics puts a limitation on the extent of separation that you can do. Right. So, I am just combining these two. Okay. I am just combining these two. What was happening before? I am just removing heat here after every stage right okay and then i am giving heat providing heat in every stage right can i exchange okay instead of putting intermediate condensers or intermediate heat exchangers i can have exchange of these streams i can have exchange of these streams so that that heat effect is taken care of okay heat effect is taken care of because one stream needs to be evaporated one stream needs to be condensed right the vapor stream needs to be condensed and the liquid stream needs to be evaporated so if that exchange is possible i don't need intermediate heat exchangers i have heat exchangers situated only at the top only at the top and at the bottom right okay so it's possible but of course like it's quite well known that it's not just the heat exchange but i'm doing mixing there Okay, I am doing mixing there and because there is some mass transfer taking place and your thermodynamic efficiency would go down if we do it in this fashion. right? If I do heat exchange in this particular fashion by actually mixing the streams instead of having indirect heat exchange, then the thermodynamic efficiency goes down, your entropy okay, factor becomes very important. right? So, because of that, because of that thermodynamic efficiency goes down, but then instead of doing heat exchange at every stage indirect heat exchange at every stage it is always convenient to do it this way okay it's always good to do it this way because you can imagine okay having condensers or, or heat exchangers situated after every stage in the column okay it's very difficult to fabricate such a system okay instead if you have these stages I can have a column, a multi-stage column and that is nothing but your normal distillation column. That is nothing but your normal distillation column in which you have stages and these stages are nothing but these intermediate units. Okay. And they can act as equilibrium stages or non-equilibrium stages depending on extent of mass transfer taking place on each and every stage. Right. So, that is the principle behind a continuous multi-stage distillation column. Okay you have to exchange the heat from vapor stream to liquid or liquid to vapor and because of that you have cascade of these stages and you have heat source and heat sinks at only two places and you have a column which is equivalent to this particular cascade. So, this is a normal distillation column, but always remember as I said before the way we operate it, the way we design it there is always loss of thermodynamic efficiency there, but it is at the cost of the convenience in fabrication, convenience in operation. Otherwise, we will need intermediate heat exchangers at every stage. Right? Now, just try and take a look at what happens inside. Okay? On every stage, I, am, I have the vapor stream coming in, I have the vapor stream coming in, I have a liquid stream coming in and I want mass transfer to take place. Right? I want mass transfer to take place from one phase to another phase. It is not just the heat transfer, it is mass transfer because every stream is getting enriched because of mass transfer or uh, either vapor is getting enriched or liquid is getting enriched depending on the volatility of the components. Right? So, in order to provide good mass transfer characteristics, okay, I need to design a stage, every unit okay, such a way that you have good mass transfer as well as heat transfer. Right? Now, what do you have? Normally, you have already packed column or tray column. In a packed column, you have solid packings okay, on which the liquid trickles down and the vapor gets in contact with it. What is the purpose of packing? To provide good interfacial area for mass transfer. Okay. Purpose of packing is to provide good interfacial area for mass transfer. See what happens, uh, liquid okay, which is a dispersed medium, vapor is a continuous medium, liquid trickles on the packing surface, it forms a thin film okay, and that thin film is 
responsible for giving high interfacial area per unit volume right and because of that you get good mass transfer the purpose of packing is to provide good mass transfer of course not at the cost of high pressure drop very important because if you go and make the packing such that you get very high interfacial area sometimes you have to uh, compromise on the pressure drop so pressure drop may increase and uh, that is not a good packing uh, tray columns very well known you have sieve tray or bubble cap and you have down comer okay liquid flows down right and uh, vapor goes through this plate is a pool of liquid here um, and you have mass transfer on every plate very uh, mm, uh, well known uh, either sieve tray or packed or other sieve tray or bubble column of course uh, this talks about a flow pattern this is a very uh, important difference between pack tower and tray tower in pack tower you have this is a packing on which as i said before you have the liquid film and you have a vapor film there is a contact between these two and you have mass transfer taking place so look at the way they go okay it is a almost a counter current flow right whereas in tray column in tray column you have liquid flow is in, in this direction right and a vapor is moving in this direction this is not a counter current flow in true sense it is a cross flow right it's a cross flow so that's the essential difference between plate column or tray column and packed column okay and that will come in picture later on when we talk about efficiency when we talk about http and all that right of course as i said before in tray columns you have two types main two types of course now uh, people are coming up with various modifications so as to get good mass transfer with as low pressure drop as possible uh, bubble cap okay is a bubble cap this is to provide more residence time okay on uh, the pool of liquid on tray column this is a normal sieve tray okay the possibility of weeping in sieve tray is much higher compared to bubble cap so the l by g in which we operate the column you have more flexibility when we uh, use uh, bubble cap okay of course this will come later uh, i'm just uh, touching upon each and every aspect so that as i said before it forms a base for further discussion now fine so we know what happens inside the column i want to design a column this typical problem is i have a mixture a plus b or a plus b plus c or whatever multi component mixture and i want to separate it i want to separate it uh, i want to make or i want to have pure components a b and c right so from so i have designed a distillation system i am calling distillation system and not distillation column because as i said before if it is a multi component system and if i am interested in every component then it's going to be a sequence so that's why i'm calling it as a system so i want to design a distillation system in such a way that i get all the components in pure form that's a design problem okay that's a design problem right and then i specify the purity okay of every stream i want a not i can't get 100% pure a so 99.9 whatever right depending on the requirements depending on the product specification so that's the design problem and then this is given the feed composition is given feed flow rate is given is determined by the capacity and required separation is given for a given column xd and xb d is distillate b is bottom right so all these compositions are given aim is to find out the size of the column or in other words the height of the column or the diameter of the column right so we have to size the column you have to determine the dimension of the column that is typically a design problem that's a design problem right simple method that we know mcapthill method very well known okay uh, I, i'll just quickly revise this is your bottom composition given this is your distillate composition given feed composition given you have this what is this this is a vle curve or equilibrium curve which is defined by the thermodynamics the moment i say that i have ethanol propanol and butanol this gets fixed right that means once i specify the components okay the vapor liquid equilibrium gets fixed so you have this curve available and what you do later is the design method okay it's very old method 1920 25 macab and till okay they came up with this particular method which became very popular the main reason is the visualization you get inside into distillation okay uh, and it's very easy to work with 
right and still popular today after 80 years right you have this rectifying section line you have stripping section line this is straight means the feed comes at a bubble point is liquid right and then you do this calculations okay number of stages and these are number of equilibrium stages right these are number of equilibrium stages what do you mean by equilibrium stage equilibrium stage is nothing but a stage which gives you maximum possible mass transfer right maximum possible mass transfer is ideal stage okay we'll talk about it later uh, something about McAptill method the oldest method that provides useful insight in distillation system very simple to understand that's why it's popular okay because of its graphical visualization and we are going to see tomorrow day after okay how one can extend this method or same concept to multi-component systems okay systems with azeotropes it's not so easy but uh, there is an attempt made and there is a book on that okay uh, on conceptual design on distillation systems and uh, we will cover the important aspects of uh, uh, the graphical methods to design distillation column for multi-component systems involving azeotropes, right. Now the major limitation, the first limitation of course is the binary system, okay, we cannot do it for multi-component system, right. And then it assumes constant molar overflow, very famous assumption, okay. Uh, what does it mean? That means on a given stage you have vapor coming in, liquid going down, okay, vapor is getting condensed, liquid will get evaporated, right, because of the heat exchange, right. The extent of condensation is same as extent of evaporation, right. That is why there is no change in flow rate, so constant molar overflow. Now extent of evaporation would be same as extent of condensation, okay, when is that true? It is true when? the latent heat of vaporization of the mixture okay is same as latent heat for condensation okay of the mixture now it may not be same and that's where the problem is and that's why i'm saying that mccarthill has a limitation it assumes that is a constant molar overflow yes um, so how do you get rid of this problem okay how do you get rid of this problem if we want to take into consideration okay the change in flow rate you have to consider the energy balance okay so along with mass balance along with material balance you have to write energy balance equations so the rectifying section profile which is based on mass balance equation okay right only mass balance equation for mccarthy method okay right may not be same if we consider the energy balance it will become a curve right because the internal reflux ratio what is the reflux ratio? L by D, right? The L by D is the external reflux ratio, right? What happens inside, okay, is uh, very important, right? And that is decided by the energy balance. And if that ratio of liquid to vapor flow rate inside the column is not constant, then the slope of the operating lines would change, right? What is the slope of the operating line in the rectifying section? It is R by R plus 1. That is reflux ratio divided by reflux ratio plus 1. If that is not constant as we go from top to bottom, right, then that slope would change, will not be a straight line, right. Now look at assumptions, a relationship between y and x, most of the times, okay, we write it in this particular form. What is alpha? Alpha is relative volatility, right. Suppose you have a mixture of A and B, A is more volatile normally I take the vapor pressure ratio, right, vapor pressure of A, okay, divided by vapor pressure of B is nothing but alpha, okay, that is an assumption. Now, look at vapor pressure, it is function of temperature, right, and in distillation column, the temperature, does it remain constant along the height? No, it changes, right, at the top you have low temperature compared to bottom, so temperature varies, so vapor pressure will also vary, right. So, it is quite likely that this ratio may vary and alpha may vary, right. But of course, sometimes the ratio may remain constant if the components are quite similar in nature. Say, you have butane propane, ethanol, propanol, 
okay the ratio may remain constant even if the vapor pressure changes with temperature the ratio remains constant so alpha remains constant that is for ideal systems most of the times it is true if you have components involving the mixture quite similar in their nature in terms of their chemical structures okay as I said ethanol butanol ethanol propanol or say butane pentane right. So, the most of the time the refinery distillation okay they are all ideal distillation because you are dealing with components with similar chemical structure okay not much difference in molecular weights you know right. So, always there we talk about relative volatility, but when it comes to non ideal systems we should be very careful this equation is not valid at all okay do not use this equation otherwise it is a disaster okay. So, this is valid we should be aware of this is valid only for ideal systems. Okay, alpha is the ratio of vapor pressures and of course, I have written it for two component system it can be written for multi component systems as well we come to that later. Now, the most general equation which comes from thermodynamics where we relate the activities in two phases. Okay. So, activity in vapor phase is equal to activity in liquid phase what is this phi is the fugacity coefficient normally different from unity when you have higher pressures for low pressure or moderate pressures phi is 1 what is pt pt is total pressure y is vapor fraction and then gamma is the liquid phase activity coefficient vp is the vapor pressure x is the liquid phase composition so that's the most general equation coming from basic thermodynamics of course the next lecture will be on vapor liquid equilibrium by professor malik who is going to talk at length okay about the thermodynamics involved right and uh, so this is something that we should use when we uh, talk about non ideal systems right and this equation is no longer valid this statement is very important vapor liquid equilibrium decides the fate of feasibility as i said feasibility if there is a formation of azeotrop and don't consider that okay and if your vapor liquid equilibrium model that you are using is wrong okay then your results will will not be authentic right determination of height of the column see by my cap thill i can measure number of stages i can count number of stages but then actual height will be decided by number of stages into http for a packed column right height equivalent to number of stage in a packed column i can visualize a packed column as a stage column right and section of packing equivalent to a particular stage right and that particular height or height of that particular section okay is called as http height equivalent to a theoretical plate and if you multiply it by number of ideal or equilibrium stages you will get the height of the column okay or in in the tray column you do not have http you are talking in terms of efficiency sometimes Murphy efficiency the various efficiency factors defined okay. Uh, so, the idea is to get number of stages ideal number of stages from basic thermodynamics apply some correction factor okay. Uh, these are all traditional methods of design okay people have now improved this method they are using simulation packages to design a distillation column we are going to have a look at that okay I am just revising or taking review of what we know about distillation today. Uh, uh, so, it gives you the height of the column. Then diameter again you have something like uh, this what is this graph this is a typical flooding graph which talks about pressure drop. Now, you have you have g which is a vapor mass velocity and l which is liquid mass velocity in the column right this ratio does not l by g does not depend on the column cross section whereas g depends on the column cross section when I say mass velocity it is mass divided by time and cross section right cross section. So, the what are these plots now this is a plot for flooding ok. Now, normally I operate a column for 60 percent flooding 80 percent flooding ok depending on the packing whatever your vendor or supplier tells you ok. So, this these are the different plots for different floodings percentage of floodings okay basically they give different pressure drops like at flooding you get almost infinite pressure drops this is where the column performance collapses right and then you have you have many graphs like this and i have select one of them depending on the percentage of flooding that i want right and then i select a point i know l by g i select a point i go back find out g okay i say it's function of g because there are some factors like packing factor density and other stuff coming in which of course we know for a given system right. So, we what is unknown is g right 
L by G is known because I know the molar flow rates, right? The ratio of molar flow rates or mass flow rates is going to be same for as uh, ratio of mass velocity. So there is no cross section coming in picture. So I calculate G and from G I calculate the cross section area and the diameter of the column. That is the way normally a diameter is calculated for uh, distillation column. So this is what we have learned so far and this is the basics of distillation. A step forward would be uh, to see uh, more complexities in distillation systems. Okay. McCaffill method, go back to McCaffill method. You have uh, instead of a simple smooth curve, okay, you have something like this, a non-ideal system, a non-ideal system, but your vapor liquid equilibrium is not defined by the equation that I told you, y is equal to alpha x upon 1 plus alpha minus 1 x. What is that equation? It is basically a hyperbola, rectangular hyperbola, right? So, that equation is no longer valid. It is quite possible system is non-ideal. There is no formation of azeotrope, but there is something like this. What is this called as? This is called as a tangent pinch, okay? A tangent pinch, acetone water, acetic acid water, okay? You may get such pinch and it has very serious implications in terms of column design, finding out minimum reflux ratio. Now, how do you calculate minimum reflux ratio? The procedure is quite straightforward by McCaptil, right? You have X D, okay? You join it with the intersection of field line and VLE curve, find out the slope, okay? Slope is nothing but R min divided by R min plus 1, right? That is the way you calculate reflux ratio, minimum reflux ratio. Will it be true in this particular case? If you do that, then you have a problem because you are talking about this particular line. Okay, joining X D, this is your X D, right? And this is the intersection. You join this line, this line goes out of VLE curve because VLE curve takes this particular pattern, right? And it, so this particular line which you join, okay, which you rather draw by joining these two points goes out of VLE curve and operation is infeasible, right? So what are you supposed to do in this case? you are supposed to take a tangent to the vapor liquid equilibrium curve and this tangent you find out a slope and line B, line B will give you the minimum reflux and not line A which is normally used for calculating minimum reflux for ideal systems, right. So, for ideal systems fine, okay, I just join these two, sorry, join these two points blindly and calculate the slope, right. But if you have tangent pinch, you have tangent pinch and somehow if you are dealing with this particular region, its presence is highly relevant okay? and you should not consider this line to calculate minimum reflux ratio, but this is the line which is very important. The line is nothing but a tangent to the vapor liquid equilibrium curve at this conflection where you have change in concavity or other there is a transition from concavity to convexity right, of the vapor liquid equilibrium curve. Very important aspect, your formation of azeotropes, formation of azeotropes is again a vapor liquid equilibrium curve, so y versus x, right. You have formation of azeotrope, what does it mean? That means at a particular point in your composition space, y is equal to x, okay. it puts a limit on distillation. See, distillation is based on the difference in volatility when I vaporize a mixture or when I vaporize uh, uh, a liquid mixture or condense a vapor mixture, then there should be change in composition. If there is no change in composition, distillation cannot be used, right. So, in this case, because of the formation of azeotrope, okay, you have two distillation regions, okay. you have one region here and another region here. What is this? There are two types of azeotropes, which are these azeotropes, minimum boiling or maximum boiling. For a binary system, you have either minimum boiling or maximum boiling azeotrope. What is this? This is a minimum boiling azeotrope. So, you have somewhere intersection of diagonal with the vapor liquid equilibrium curve and you have formation of azeotrope and because of which you have the entire region getting divided into two sub regions, we call them as distillation regions. Okay? 
and this is nothing but a distillation boundary. It's a very important concept and we are going to extend this concept to multi-component systems, non-ideal systems in the lectures. So, you have two regions. Now, what, what is the significance? Suppose you have a feed here, right? Suppose you have a feed here. Now, if somebody tells me that I give you feed at this particular composition, right? And you get me XD correspond to this composition. Is it possible? With simple distillation, it is not possible. It is not possible to cross the region. If I am in this particular region, if my XB is here, my XD cannot be here. My XD that is my distillate composition would be at the most up to the azeotropic point, right? Right? Okay. Yeah. So, you have to realize that there is a phase separation that is taking place. Uh, in yeah, uh, shall I interrupt you? Not, uh, concentrate till the point where one phase is at the aqueous phase, region aqueous phase, and there would be an oil phase at top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this is. I'm not talking about phase separation here at all. I'm just talking about homogeneous azeotrope. Now, it uh, brings me to uh, uh, another classification of azeotropes. There are two types of azeotropes. As I said, minimum boiling, maximum boiling. But uh, again, we can classify the azeotrope in terms of whether there's a phase split or not. So we have homogeneous azeotrope or heterogeneous azeotrope. Okay. In homogeneous azeotrope, when the vapors condense. Okay, you have a single liquid phase. In heterogeneous azeotropes, okay, if your vapors they condense, you have two liquid phases, right? Now, when I'm saying x is equal to y, in the first case it's quite obvious the liquid composition is equal to vapor composition, right? In the second case, when the vapors they condense, you get two liquid phases. Which x is equal to y? It is the overall liquid phase composition that is equal to y and not any individual phase. Right. Anyway, we will talk about it later. Here I am just telling you about a general azeotrope and there is no phase separation. Okay. Probably the homogeneous azeotrope. Okay. Heterogeneous azeotrope also can be exploited very well okay, in heterogeneous uh, azeotropic distillation systems. We will see that later. Okay. So, when you are here, your XF is here, your XB is here, you cannot have XD in this particular zone unless you do some modification in the system. You cannot use simple distillation to cross the region. So, the regions formed is a boundary in composition space, always remember that. Right? Uh, I was talking about the volatility change. Now, look at this particular plot. You have, suppose I say it is a mixture of A and B, A is more volatile and I am plotting it for A. Normally, McCarthy is plotted for a most volatile component, right? The most volatile component. So this is Y A. This is X A. So in this region, look at this. In this region, A is more volatile than B, right? Because the vapor composition is higher than the liquid composition. What happens in this region? Yeah, B is more volatile than B. A A rather, right? So if we just go by boiling points, you you will always say that A is more volatile, but when you actually draw this diagram, there is a formation of azeotrope in a particular region. Okay, the volatility reversal takes place, right? Okay, and this point is very important. Talk about it later. All right. So presence of azeotrope we have seen. Now energy balance, McCarthy. Energy balance is not considered, but we need to consider it if you really want to approach towards reality, right? It will take care of the change in internal flow rates. Okay. The internal reflux ratio will no longer be constant along the column height and operating lines will not be straight as I told you before. Okay. So, energy balance is required to be considered okay, because your reflux ratio would change and it has a direct implication on feasibility because reflux ratio as you know is a minimum limit on reflux ratio. Okay. If it goes below that inside a column also the feasibility is lost. Right. So, it is a very important aspect and it needs to be considered at some stage or other in your design methodology. Okay. I am just making you aware of different aspects of distillation and later on we are going to see how to take care of all these issues 
while designing a distillation system okay, for a given mixture. Now multi component systems again the cap fill is good for binary systems when you have components number of components greater than 2 okay you start facing problems can you use mccaptil method for ternary systems can you use mccaptil method for five component systems not possible okay so of course you do some assumptions like you work with pseudo components okay i say like i group some components higher boiling components in one category and lower boiling components one and then i somehow calculate some uh, apparent relative volatility and then work with mccaptil method because i know how to work with mccaptil method right but then it, it's not always true okay it's it you may land up in problems okay like uh, by while making these assumptions okay it depends on your uh, composition sometimes if you have to form again things will be much different okay so uh, multi component systems again need uh, attention now what do we know about multi component systems you might have heard about fansky equation for minimum number of stages right this is for design of multi component systems uh, underwood equation for calculation of reflux ratio i'll, I'll show you those equations later uh, but these two again make assumption that the system is ideal okay system is ideal you will see those equations these are the equations right this is your fancy equation it is all derived i am not going to do the derivation you can uh, any standard textbook on mass transfer operations will uh, talk about it you have this top composition bottom composition relative volatility the moment you have relative volatility that means you are assuming the system to be ideal no formation of azeotropes whenever i use alpha okay always remember okay i am ignoring the presence of azeotrope if any in the system right uh, this is your underwoods equation needs some rigorous calculations this theta okay which is to be calculated uh, by solving non linear algebraic equations but of course since multi component system is there you have many components dimensionality of the system is high so you have to deal with this problem solving non linear algebraic equations and then you get minimum reflux ratio so these methods or these uh, techniques or other i would say uh, equations are available okay to calculate the minimum reflux ratio right but again i'm going to tell you the limitation about it and the main limitation is of course the relative volatility okay concept because i am not considering the non ideal system here okay right if there is a formation of azeotrope this is not useful at all right and there are some correlations also i have uh, 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 written them for your reference here gilliland correlation and then you have kirkbride equation this talks about the minimum reflux ratio relationship between minimum reflux ratio and uh, minimum number of stages Kirkbride equation talks about uh, number of stages in rectifying section, number of stages in stripping section. Of course, they are empirical equations, and most of the times for ideal systems they hold good. Okay, but when it comes to non-ideal systems, okay, we can't make use of these equations at all. Okay, even for multi-component systems, right? So again, that's a problem. I've talked about this before assumption of equilibrium stage see the serious implications of this you have a stage in the column you have a stage in the column vapor coming in liquid coming in they get in contact with each other okay there is a mass transfer heat transfer taking place and you have these two streams going out which i call as overflow rather from the column um, uh, that should be n minus 1 i think why n minus 1 sorry this one it all depends on how you count n okay if you count it from top to bottom okay so when i count condenser as one and then when i go down okay i have one two three four five right so the n for condenser would be one n for the stage at the top would be two and so on right so the, this stream would have n which is less than the actual stream and the convention is like this the streams leaving a particular stage nth stage okay right the streams leaving that stage will have a suffix n right so whatever coming from the bottom right is from the stage which has n plus 1 suffix and from the top n minus 1 we may change it later on like I'll, uh, as and when we talk about it uh, i'll uh, say more on this but then at this moment the point is that these two streams are getting in contact with each other okay and uh, there is a mass transfer and heat transfer taking place and when i say it's an equilibrium stage that means these two streams very important these two streams leaving that particular stage they are in phase equilibrium 
right? They are in vapor liquid equilibrium. They satisfy the relationship which is given by vapor liquid equilibrium basic thermodynamics. Very important, okay? Because sometimes and most of the times rather, in reality, a stage or a tray, say tray in a stage column or um, uh, plate column, right? You don't see equilibrium. Okay. When I say you have equilibrium, that means I am providing sufficient residence time on a given stage. Okay. I am pro providing sufficient hold up on a given stage, so that two streams uh, get in contact with each other and you have maximum possible mass transfer. Okay. You have maximum possible mass transfer and so that you have these two streams which are in equilibrium. But we can have a non-equilibrium stage as well if you include efficiency okay, of mass transfer. You see what exactly happens on a given stage. Okay. Then you can have a non-equilibrium stage as well. Right. So that you have a relationship between these two and uh, when I say equilibrium stage, these two okay, are related to each other by vapor liquid equilibrium. If it is ideal system, then you have y is equal to alpha x upon 1 plus alpha minus 1 x. Right? And if it is non-ideal, then you have a general system, general uh, uh, equation rather coming from basic thermodynamics. So, you have to calculate activity coefficients, fugacity coefficients and all. So, we are going to have many lectures on simulation. So, I thought okay, let us have some introduction simulation. We, these days we are talking a lot about simulation. There are many commercial simulators like say Aspen, Pro2, Hisys, uh, ChemCAD available in market. Um, what do they do actually? Like uh, how, is, how is this particular field of simulation different from what we have learned uh, uh, in our undergraduate uh, curriculum on uh, distillation uh, or other the conventional McCarthy method of design and all. So, uh, let us try and understand one thing that uh, there is a basic difference between these two problems design and simulation. Okay. Uh, design means as I said earlier, like your XD is defined, XB is defined, XF is defined and you are supposed to give dimensions to the column or calculate number of stages and diameter of a column. That is a design problem. Simulation is exactly opposite. Okay? That means a column is in front of you, feed is given to you, you give feed to a column and then try and see okay, how a column behaves. Right? how the things change with respect to time, what happens at steady state, how the compositions change with respect to height, what is xd, what is xb. We have no control over xb and xd. Okay, of course, you can change reflux ratio and operating parameter, but once you set those parameters, like what have xd and xb is defined or rather gets fixed automatically right? uh, and simulation gives you the answer for that. Right? The simulation is like a virtual experiment. Okay, you have the column in front of you, you are giving a feed and you are seeing the performance or response of the column to that particular feed. If you are seeing the changes with respect to time, it is dynamic simulation and if you are going to look at what happens at infinite time at steady state in a continuous process, it is steady state simulation. Right? So, as I said before, you have feed composition given, column height given and the result of simulation is look at the column performance, especially the XD, the top composition and the bottom composition. Along with this, you get so much information like how the what is the column composition profile, temperature profile, pressure drop, if you want, right? How to solve a simulation problem? Why simulations were not so popular in earlier days? Okay, like when we learned chemical engineering, when our generation learned chemical engineering, we didn't learn simulation, right? Uh, but today, most of the colleges like they have uh, simulation in their uh, curriculum, okay, the undergraduate or even postgraduate students, they learn simulation. The, mo the main reason for this is simulation needs rigorous calculations. Okay. How do we solve simulation problem? We have to write equations for every stage. Now, these equations are not different. Okay. Whatever equations you are using for design problem, they are same as uh, what we are going to use for simulation. But the problem is such that okay, you have to solve all these equations simultaneously. For a given column, okay, since you do not know xd and xb, okay, you have to write equations for every stage and solve these equations simultaneously. Right? In a design problem, situation was different. You knew xd, you know, knew xb. So, you had done calculation by capital method from top to bottom and even uh, for bottom to top, whatever. Okay? So, those calculations were easier okay, with the help of McCarthy or any graphical method for a design problem. Whereas simulation, since you do not know xd and xb, though the equation, the model is same, right? you have to solve these equations simultaneously. Which are these equations? Material balance equations, 
equilibrium constraints or equilibrium equations vapor liquid equilibrium as I said if you assume the stage to be uh, an equilibrium stage right the vapor and liquid compositions are in equilibrium you should know the vapor liquid equilibrium relationship then the summation equations of every stage if you are writing in terms of mole fractions sigma x should be equal to 1 sigma y should be equal to 1 right then you have to write energy balance also and solve these equations these are called mesh equations quite popularly like m e s h ok uh, m stands for material right and e stands for equilibrium s for summation h for energy balance right and you have to solve them simultaneously which is important and when you want to solve them simultaneously there is so much calculation involved and you cannot do it manually why see this question how many equations suppose you have column with say 10 stages ok a very small column 10 stages and you have say 4 components how many equations you will have you will have to write equation for all the components ok individual and then solve together. So, at least 40 equations you have if you just write material balance then you have energy balance if you want to include pressure drop and all. So, many equations you have to solve simultaneously and you need the help of computer right and that is why simulation approach was not so popular in earlier days right and today with the advent of high efficiency computers many commercial simulators are becoming popular ok. And that is why the need to learn what simulation can do how it can be used effectively uh, to solve our uh, uh, design problems at the same time the day to day problem is very very effective uh, tool. For example, in, a, in, in your industry suppose you have a column ok already running I want to use it for some other purpose ok for and I, I want to do a rating of that column I want to see whether that column will perform well ok for another separation ok. The design approach would not be useful because I know now the column is there I know how many stages it has. I know the feed composition, I know the feed flow rate ok. I can just quickly solve a simulation problem ok. Use any commercial simulator you do not need to really solve equations yourself ok. Use commercial simulator and solve the equation and see whether it can give me the right kind of XD and XB required ok. Play with some parameters like reboiler duty, reflux ratio and uh, with some iterations probably you will get it ok. But of course, there are limitations if you have zero formation and all you should be very careful and we will talk about it later. So, complete design method or a right design methodology would involve many steps ok. Of course, the first thing is thermodynamics ok. First thing is thermodynamics you should have a right vapor liquid equilibrium if you go wrong there how much care you take later ok. Uh, it is not going to be useful because your thermodynamics itself is not correct ok. Then you are going to get uh, results ok which uh, may not be correct ok and your design will fail. Right. So, getting thermodynamics right vapor liquid equilibrium is very essential. So, you should know the theory of vapor liquid equilibrium. So, vapor liquid equilibrium is necessary the thermodynamic feasibility needs to be uh, checked first ok. If there are some distillation boundaries as I said before formation of azeotropes and all you should first find it out. So, first question is whether it is feasible that means a mixture is given to you and uh, somebody says that I want purity uh, then you should be able to say whether it is feasible or not. If it is feasible then only you go ahead ok find out minimum reflux minimum number of stages I am talking about a general system ok this is what you do in McCapital method right for a binary system but you should be able to do at the end of this program for multi component systems as well and for uh, even non ideal systems ok. Find out approximate number of stages. Why I call it approximate? Because when you do these calculations, you you make some assumptions. Sometimes you neglect energy balance, like what McCapthill does, right? Uh, find out operating reflux ratio. Some most of the times it is 1.3 to 1.5 times the minimum reflux ratio. And there's a the logic behind that. Okay, like uh, we call it as optimum reflux ratio. Because if you increase reflux ratio, your energy cost goes up. Okay. Uh, if you decrease reflux ratio your capital cost goes up because number of stages would increase right and uh, there is an optimum ok. Most of the times it is uh, uh, we say that about 1.3 to 1.5 times the uh, minimum reflux ratio. Uh, then if it is a system multi component system the difference from binary is like you have a sequence now I am interested in all the components in pure form. So, I need a sequence so, I will have multiple columns if I have 3 component systems I need at least 2 columns simple columns ok. Sometimes you can do it in one column, but then uh, uh, most of the time I need multiple columns to uh, deal with multi component systems. So, identify many sequences possible to optimization come up with proper sequence. 
and once you have a design ready, feasibility ready and then you can do rigorous simulations because most of the things I have, most of the steps I have here I have used okay, I have neglected say energy balance, I have made some assumptions which I can take care of in column simulation which is rigorous, here I am going to take help of computer okay. So, I can afford to have many equations here, so you can solve them and get a real picture uh, what happens okay. And of course, you can adjust the parameters, there are systematic methods to do that called optimization okay. Uh, at just number of stages reflux ratio so that you get the best possible design or economically best possible design. Uh, and after this of course, you may have control strategy. Sometimes now people are talking about involving or including control strategies at design stage itself, right. So, this is a complete design method, uh, uh, there are many steps involved and we are going to touch upon all these aspects uh, as and when we go ahead in this particular course. Talk about energy integration as I said before, now we are talking about sequencing, multi-component system, we have many distillation columns, there is a quite, uh, there is an opportunity rather to do energy integration. So, I am just going to give you some examples, talk about it in detail uh, in lectures to come later. Um, so, the objective of course, is to minimize the energy consumption and uh, the, see in distillation column, it is a very popular question, in fact, we ask this to uh, our students who come for interviews and all for MTech and all. Uh, we have a distillation column, you have condenser and reboiler. In condenser, you remove heat, in reboiler, you uh, uh, give heat, okay. So, uh, is it possible to combine these two because you are removing heat at the condenser and you are providing heat in the reboiler. Uh, if I combine these two, then uh, it is good, no, it is uh, good energy integration. I do not need energy for distillation, right. Uh, why can't I do that? Answer is quite straightforward, okay. But then that forms a basis, okay, for uh, uh, energy integration in distillation systems, okay. Why can't I combine condenser and reboiler? Because condenser I am removing heat, reboiler I am providing heat. So, it is a very straightforward answer. The reboiler has higher temperature. If I want heat at higher temperature, because condenser removes the heat at lower temperature, right. So, lower temperature, heat is available at low temperature, whereas in reboiler, I need heat at high temperature. So, this integration is not possible at all because heat is available at low temperature, I need heat at high temperature. There should be driving force for heat transfer, right. And that is not possible in same distillation column. So, you have to look for some other distillation column in your process, okay, to do energy integration. That is very important. Uh, you can play with operating pressure because it is very well known that if you increase operating pressure in distillation column, the overall temperature will go up, right. So, if I want proper heat transfer to take place, proper delta T or heat uh, temperature driving force, then I can play with pressure of some distillation column in my process. I can increase the pressure there, uh, sorry, temperature there and can get a required temperature driving force. Of course, you have to see by increasing pressure, thickness would go up and all these problems would come in picture, but then uh, possibilities exist. So, this is one example, we, uh, of course, uh, uh, we will talk about it uh, in detail later, but then you have mixture A, B, I just want to separate it. I instead of doing it in a simple column, ideal system, you have two distillation columns, one is operated at high pressure and one is operated at low pressure, okay. So, column one is at high pressure, so the condenser temperature would go up and it is able to give heat to the reboiler of uh, column two, okay, which is operated at low pressure and low temperature, okay. So, I can make use of this particular arrangement, okay. Uh, by instead of doing it in single column, if I want to do energy integration, this is one possibility. Of course, whether it is economically feasible or not is a different question, but possibility is there. As thermal coupling, you have mixture of A, B, C. Now, I separate A, B from the top, B, C from the bottom. I have two columns, okay. Now, look at this. You have a reboiler here, you have a condenser here, okay. I can uh, and I am removing B from here, I am removing B from here, why can't I have this particular arrangement, okay. Instead of using two columns here, I just combine them, okay, because the temperatures of this point, this point, okay, they match, right. So, I have this column, so I am just having a coupled column, okay, they call it thermally coupled column, okay, so, right. So, this is not the end of it, okay, I can go ahead, see, I have, I have a re, uh, condenser here, I have a reboiler here, I can get rid of that. Look at this arrangement. I do not have a condenser here, I do not have a reboiler here, 
okay. There is a systematic methodology how to do it. I am just giving you an example as an introduction. Okay. So, you have a pre-fractionator, you have a main column, right? you do not have intermediate heat exchangers, only two heat exchangers. Now, you have two columns sitting side by side, why cannot I combine them? Okay. So, I have a partition column, just single vessel, okay. but from outside it is just a single column, but inside you have two columns. right? So, so such possibility is there and it is not just the hypothetical concept, okay. it is practiced commercially. Okay. Like say butadiene separation from C4 stream, BASF has a plan okay, to use uh, something called as partition column or uh, more popularly known as divided wall columns. Right. So, there are many interesting concepts. Azeotropic distillation, I talked about it. Okay. Uh, if you have mixture which is difficult to separate, when I say difficult to separate, it can either form azeotrop or boiling point are very close to each other. I can add external component, entrainer or azeotropic agent okay, so that it improves the separation. Okay. The entrainer will form azeotrope with one of the components, sometimes both. Okay. That is the basic condition, the outside component, the external component should form azeotrope right. and when it forms azeotrope, okay, it improves the separation. Azeotrope can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, but then mostly will prefer heterogeneous azeotrope. Why? Because of further separation of azeotrope is easy, but because azeotrope, if it forms azeotrope, makes the separation easy, but later on I need to separate that azeotrope or break that azeotrope which is formed just for separation. right? So, uh, if it is heterogeneous, it helps us. We are going to see that in detail later. Right? An example of course is uh, it separation of ethanol from water uh, with um, uh, benzene, okay, ethylene glycol is extractive distillation, uh, whereas benzene is uh, azeotropic distillation. Okay, um, and what is extractive distillation? Uh, extractive distillation again, external component is added. It doesn't form azeotrope. It is most of the times high boiling, okay, uh, least volatile in the system, and uh, it improves the VLE or VLE is changed in such a way that separation is facilitated. Okay, so example again, acetone, methanol with water as entrainer. Okay. There are many, many examples, uh, extractive distillation, again butadiene example I told you uh, uh, where they use special solvent like NMP and all uh, uh, to separate it from uh, C4. Right. Reactive distillation, uh, as I said it is not just the extension of azeotropic or extractive distillation. What we are doing is here we are combining reaction with separation and uh, it is not just a separator or not just a distillation column, it is a reactor as well. So, you have to have knowledge about kinetics, the entire reaction engineering concept will come in picture okay, if you want to design reactive distillation column and it is much different from other distillation techniques. Okay. But then with this you get enhanced performance and I would say that it is not just enhanced distillation, but it, it is a process, it is a process entire flow sheet can be combined or condensed in a single piece of equipment where you have both reaction distillation taking place and you are taking out the products. And there are again commercial examples like methyl acetate from methanol and acetic acid, the Isman Kodak process, okay, they condense the entire plant in a single unit. Okay. Uh, they had in the, in, the, in the plant they have just one column. Okay. So, methanol and acetic acid going in and uh, you getting uh, methyl acetate from the top and water from the bottom. Okay. Uh, so, you can imagine like otherwise a conventional process would have a reactor followed by about 8 to 9 distillation column because the separation is not so easy you have formation of azeotropes and all okay, methanol forming azeotrope with uh, methyl acetate and methyl acetate forming azeotrope with water. So, uh, it is a very complex system otherwise, but they have combined uh, distillation column with reaction and uh, um, it acts like a magic box where you are giving reactant and coming out with products pure products. right? So, that is the potential of reactive distillation. I will just go through this concept. Uh, you have a reaction, just the concept, right? A plus B giving C plus D. You know the Lee Chatterley's principle is a reversible reaction, right? If I remove one of the products, then reaction will shift in forward direction. This is the law of mass action, right? This is all well known. You have a CSTR, okay? The volatilities are right. I just operate the CSTR in boiling condition, okay? The heat is provided. I take one steam out. So, normal CSTR is you have reactant going in, product coming out. Right. Now, this CSTR is a very special CSTR where you have uh, two product streams, one is vapor and one is another is liquid right. and these two are in phase equilibrium 
okay now what happens if c is more volatile okay c will come out but then since you have only one stage here for distillation a b and d impurities would present in c right but relatively this cstr with two outgoing streams will perform better than the normal cstr because you have simultaneous removal of one of the products can i improve the performance can i go one step ahead because c had a b d right a b d i put a column there right i put a column there and make sure that c is separated in pure form so i avoid losses of a b d now when is this possible again if there is no azeotrope form right c doesn't form azeotrope with any of the components it can be separated in pure form a relatively ideal system or non azeotropic system where you are removing c in a pure form from from the top of this particular column so this is again one step ahead i'm avoiding the losses of a and b i'm getting c in pure form but this is not the end of it look at this particular stream okay it has d a and b and suppose d is the least volatile component okay can i add another column there a stripper okay and i'm removing d in pure form recycling a and b back to the reactor now look at this this is like a column now i have a reactor which receives a reactants and gives out c and d in pure form can i combine these three i can okay i can combine these three units and this is a normal reactor distillation column where you have a reaction taking place you have a reaction taking place in the middle part okay and the top or the upper part of the column is a rectifying section a non reactive rectifying section this is a non reactive stripping section right this is a hybrid reactive distillation column which would receive a and b here right and will give c and d in pure form that's what this esterification process is okay now if you really want uh, the same extent of reaction here see what what's the difference between these two here you have a stirrer okay why do you need a stirrer you need stirrer to uh, good get good mass transfer suppose you have uh, you have a solid catalyst okay i don't want any mass transfer limitations for reaction okay so i do stirring so that the mass transfer coefficient is enhanced okay and i get as much reaction rate as possible right uh, when i move to this i don't have the provision okay to uh, do stirring right so sometimes it's a limitation okay uh, that you may get mass transfer resistance if the reaction is very fast if the reaction is very fast if the reaction is relatively uh, i would say uh, or moderately fast okay in that case i can provide sufficient residence time sufficient hold up sufficient catalyst loading such that okay i get uh, the required extent of reaction but that limitation is still there okay i can't get the kind of mass transfer uh, coefficients or characteristics that i get here okay so that's the limitation of reactive distillation but you can have better column internals okay to get as much uh, uh, mass transfer coefficient and interfacial area as possible Okay. now in this case you can have a reactor a very big reactor with huge uh, amount of or other a huge hold up in that whereas in this case since we are operating a distillation column in which most of the times the liquid is a dispersed phase and gas is the continuous phase okay if the, you have reaction is homogeneous then the hold up is less and residence time is less so that's again one more constraint okay that's again one more constraint so now there are new concepts coming up you can have a side reactor okay you can put some reactor along with this and uh, uh, provide as much hold up as possible so if the reaction is slow if the reaction is slow which needs very high hold up very large hold up rather okay in that case reactive distillation may not be feasible okay so there are constraints it's not that it works always but then for some reaction it works very well 